Um, I know you're, you're, you're here to do ETF Edge uh, as our segment. I, if you have an opinion on what we're witnessing, since you are literally the person who is in the booth as these IPOs open for the very first time, I'm, I'm just curious your thoughts as you watch DoorDash open as high as it, it did when you are so attuned to how these things are priced. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating for me today, Scott, because I'm not on the floor standing next to the man who trades these stocks, uh, which is a major part of the whole emotional involvement in this. So uh, I feel a little bit deprived today and uh, really missing the floor of the New York Stock Exchange and hope to get back there quickly. Three things. First, up market. Most important thing, historic highs. Number two, a known name, known to millions of people. As you said, you yourself, Scott, ordered from this recently. And number three, strong retail pressure. And yes, I really do believe the increased retail pres presence we've seen is a factor here in a lot of trading that we've seen recently. So those three factors really adds to this. For DoorDash itself, I think the important thing is one person said to me, you know, an analyst, he said, you know, think of this company as a logistics company. They're trying to solve, you know, the final mile with a very perishable product. And the question is, how do you do that? Grubhub, obviously, and others are involved in that, but it's an interesting question. Scott, let me move on here and talk to some people who know about ETF flows here. This is the ETF edge portion of halftime uh, and some important big ETF flows going on. Our guest today, Harry Witten from Old Mission, Todd Rosenbluth from CFRA Research. Harry, let me start with you. You watch ETF flows. We are seeing some very big inflows and some very big ETFs, including that IPO ETF, which is having an historic day of trading. Yeah, hey, Bob. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you're right. IPO is up over 100% year to date, seeing big inflows over the past week. Uh, the fund has grown to over half a billion dollars this year. Um, it's really exciting. I think, you know, everybody's tied on to the whole record of IPOs happening this year. I think there's going to be, by the end of December, over 400 new funds that'll be, or new issues launched in the IPO space. Yeah, important thing, too, as well. We're also seeing some inflows into uh, uh, Kathy's, uh, Kathy Woods Fund, ARKK. That's just been a monster this year, and it continues in December as well. Yeah, ARK, ARK ETFs as a whole, as a family, have probably been one of the biggest stories this year. They brought in over $15 billion this year. They were a pretty small issuer and now become a major player in the space. Uh, they have funds that are up 140, 150, 160 percent, and they're not leveraged products, which is usually where you see those returns. Uh, it's just been a fantastic story, and it'll probably be ongoing just because they're really innovative at what they do. Uh, another area I think yeah, you might Todd, have interest GameStop. in is, Oh, go ahead. No, go another ahead. area Sorry. that's been uh, active has been uh, emerging markets, which have been outperforming since March lows. Uh, EEM is consistently a top five traded ETF and Wisdom Tree has a product SSOE that has gone from 20 billion, 20 million shares outstanding to 80 million shares uh, and uh, is really performed very, very well. Yeah. Uh, Todd, GameStop, I see today down 16 percent, some dif disappointing commentary from them. But it's not impacting the gaming ETFs. You look at ESPO, Hero, GAMR. These things have had huge inflows all throughout the year. Investors love using these thematic tech ETFs, including gaming. These are all at new highs, all these gaming ETFs that are out there. That's right. These video gaming oriented ETFs have gathered about a billion dollars of net inflows in 2020. The stay at home environment that we've talked about beforehand with working from home. This is playing from home. But these are global ETFs. So while you have exposure to electronic arts uh, and Activision Blizzard, about 25% of Hero, H-E-R-O, is in the United States. You've got exposure to Nintendo. Uh, the Vanek product, ESPO, has Tencent as its largest holding that you showed on the screen. So you really have a global play uh, for these ETFs, other ETFs like Nerd, uh, and you're showing Gamer, G-A-M-R, on the screen as well. We think this trend is going to continue into 2021, regardless of more people are going back to home. They've gotten comfortable playing video games, and they're likely to do that in the future. All right, Harry and Todd, thanks very much.